I'm going to talk to you about the future of education. This story that I'm going to tell really has two parts, and I'm going to not spend too much time on what is happening today. I'm much more interested in what's coming in the world. A person like this, how much will his world have changed in 20 years? Life is going to be a lot different in 20 years. Now we think a lot about tradition, we think a lot about today, and we think some about tomorrow, but we don't spend enough time thinking about the day after tomorrow. And this is all from a guy named Peter Hinson. That's what's important to the kids. They don't care about the tradition, they care about what's gonna happen in their lifetimes. And so when we do reforms, we typically go to tomorrow, and there's lots of that happening, but we don't do enough of the day after tomorrow. And that's what I really want to focus on. Because all our kids need to get to the future not equipped for the world of yesterday where we grew up, which we all know was a world of reading and writing, but equipped with the skills that allow them to thrive in a very different context of the third millennium. The kids need our help to become the people they want to be and that they need to be in their future and not the people we want them to be. We all, of course, want our kids to be educated. But what's changing is what an education is and what it means to be educated. And that's where we really have to start thinking about some new perspectives. How can we do this? How can we unleash these kids' new power? There's this big wall between what we do today and a better education. And what we do today is we throw darts at that wall. 21st century skills, social, emotional, standard school choice, small classes, and especially technology these days, but they don't get through. I think there are two main things that prevent our moving forward. The first is that we think Learning is the same as education. It's not. We all talk about learning and how kids learn and how they're going to learn and can they learn with technology. But learning is not the goal of education. Learning is a means to the goal of education. The goal of education is becoming a good, effective, world-improving person. That's what we want our kids to become, good, effective, world-improving people. And if we want to do that, it turns out that today there's a better means than just sitting in a classroom and learning. It's real-world accomplishment. It's going out and doing projects that make the world a better place, something that we couldn't do very much of when we were young when we were in school, but the kids today can do and are doing. So that if we focus them on learning and we spend all our time looking at their grades and saying, how well are you doing, they're not going to get where they need to go. And that's the true root of our educational problems. It's how we see and treat our kids in every country in the world. We disrespect them. Why do I know this? Because they tell me. We underappreciate what they can do, and we underestimate what they can do. In every country in the world, what they can do today, because we think of what we could do back then, which wasn't that much. And in fact, we often, far too often, treat our kids as if they were pets. Go here. Do this. Follow me. Go to the bathroom when I tell you. And finally, perform the tricks I taught you. That's what testing is. We have to change this. That's the huge thing that has to change because not only are our kids people, but increasingly they're people with extended brains through the technology all networked together. And if you're a teacher and you look out at your class and you see extended brains all networked together, you have to do very different things for them. These kids are empowered with huge new capabilities. They can do all these kinds of things in new and better ways. And we have to learn to take advantage of this. We haven't even begun to do that. Our grandfathers did this, we did this, our kids should do this. That's not right anymore. Because to thrive and succeed in what is now the third millennium, we need a different 
education. This is a huge transition in thinking. This is as big as going from the world is flat to the world is round, or from all the planets revolve around the Earth to they go around the sun. Those were huge revolutions in thinking. 